Wilson. I'm David. I'm Lindsay. I'm Ben. It's Jason's daughter. Hello and welcome to the Vans Collaboration. And uh, this one slightly different. So I hope you'll watch along, watch the, uh, the people who are making the videos for you, who'll be up there, or up there, <laughs> and uh, you'll be able to follow them in the playlist below, or individual videos, as ever. And when we get to the end, they'll be the same. So this week's, this month's theme is your, your best fantasy trip. And uh, budget is no object. You could probably guess from our title that this is uh, an island. Oh, Lindsay's at work, something like that. Uh, so it's just me this time. And yeah, it, it's an island. In fact, it's a group of islands, the Falkland Islands. Now, it's cost a fair bit to get there. Um, some of the costs, for example, uh, flights. There's two ways of doing it. The way we've decided is to take a risk on the Air Force flights and to head direct. And instead of refueling on Ascension, we we would volunteer to go on an air-to-air -air refueling. Not sure how Lindsay will feel about that. Anyway, we've got various trips, etc., planned. And they cost round about a hundred to a hundred and fifty pound per person, with one at two hundred. Um, but the the ones which are non-day trips, the more expensive ones, do have a night's accommodation under canvas uh, in it. So, before going into anything else, let's do our itinerary. Day one. A direct flight from Bryce Norton with an air-to-air -air refuel. This is £2,200 return for each person. Now, flying with the Air Force can be an interesting experience. It can also be frustrating. There are two scheduled flights a week from the UK to the Falkland Islands, leaving Bryce on Wednesdays and Saturdays. These flights have a stopover or air-to-air -air refuel near Ascension Island. The cost for non Portland Island resident is £2,220 return. And the stewards have beards. Anyway, that's how we intend to fly out. And it's a 27 hour flight, so day one's a bit of an extended day. So day two, we'll have a rest day at Stanley and we'll perhaps take a visit to the dockyard, museums and the battlefields in the area. Day three, we'll visit Bertha's Beach. This is situated on Fitzroy Farm, East Falkland, and is named after the shipwrecked bark Bertha. Bertha's Beach is classified as an important bird area and is uh, going to be great for the local seabirds and wildlife. Day four, a day trip out up Mount Osborne. Osborne. It's 2,312 feet. It's the highest peak on the Falkland Islands and is located in the northern part of East Falkland. It can be reached on a day trip for most settlements. Day five, Situated on Smiley's Farm in the northeast of East Falkland, Plumland Beach is a beautiful stretch of white sand that is home to many a variety of wildlife. Gentoo and Magellanic penguins breed here and many other sea and shorebirds can be seen. Day 6 and 7. This is an overnight stop. Located at the northern tip of East Falkland, the Cape Dolphin Peninsula is reached by off-track road from Cape Dolphin Farm. Named after HMS Dolphin, the ship of British explorer John Bryan. Battlefields, wildlife, HMS Dolphin. <laughs> Day 8. 
fishing. I couldn't go to the Falkland Islands without having a day's fishing. The fishing down there is superb, absolutely superb. And the last time I was there, you may recall from a video, that the, uh, the supply boat didn't come in. And myself and a number of others, um, although they didn't really thank us at the time, but we kept the, uh, <laughs> the camp supplied with food in the form of fish. Yes, they got fed up with it rather easily, but uh, hey, that's all there was for a long time. But it was amazing actually what the cooks did with it in the form of curried sea trout, chilli sea trout, um, sea trout, sea trout. <laughs> oh dear. So, days 9 and 10, Volunteer Point. This is named after a ship, the Volunteer. And Volunteer Point is part of Johnson's Harbour and is located again in the northeast of Eastern Falkland. It's accessible by road and then by helicopter. Bull Point will be our next two day trip, day 11 and day 12. It's situated at the southern end of East Falkland on North Arm Farm. The area can only be reached by an off-road journey and again it's an important bird watching area. Day 13, back to Fitzroy Farm, East Falkland, on Kelp Point, also known as Whale Point due to the whale bones found regularly on the beach. It is reached by a combination of road and off-road travel. The White Sand Beach is home to a range of wildlife including Gentoo, Megalanic penguins and amongst other species of birds and many southern elephant seals and rockhopper penguins. I spoke about them before in other Fulton Island videos. <laughs> but uh, there you go. And then we sadly come to day 14. There's a direct return flight from MPA, Mount Pleasant Airfield, to Bryce Norton. This time we've asked for an air-to-air -air refuel, but weren't quite so insistent as uh, a stopover at Bryce, although it would be out with, would give Lindsay a chance to see that island as well. As a, an aside on this, if you're not on an organised tour, permission to visit on a day excursion, permission needs to be sought first through the tourist and development coordinator and the local farm itself that you have to cross to get to the various points, especially battlefields, um, if you want to go and you know on a, a self-guided tour. Um, as we um, were doing our fantasy trip uh, on Fantasy Islands, we <laughs> we wanted to cram in as much as possible, and it wasn't really. We yes, we fitted one air trip in, uh, but it wasn't really. A 14 day trip is not long enough to rely on Figas, the Falkland Island General Aviation uh, Service. Now, uh, to uh, follow on on abbreviations, I, I, I forgot about these, there are two notable uh, Falkland Island Institutes. One, the Falkland Island Broadcasting Service. Yes, the broadcaster down there is called FIBS. Two, the Falkland Island Laundry Facility. Yes, the laundrette is called Filth. <laughs> the great sense of humour. Um, well, it goes along with what I call a great sense of humour. So, what is all this going to cost us? The totals, flights, 4,440, trips, 2,240, accommodation for the nights that we aren't on two overnight stops and trips, £1,200, and I've allowed £1,200 for food, but most of the food we will be eating will be in the form of 
supply food on the, the trips. So we've got a few evening meals um, when we're not on a trip and when we're only on day trips. And the prices, if you check out their menus, are very good compared with um, UK, etc. So this is a total of £9,080. Not really a great deal of money for two weeks holiday in a fantastic place. Um, I couldn't call it that now. Um, I was calling it other things when I was stationed there for a while. But uh, yeah, it was our, it will be, because I think we'll take this sometime when Lindsay retires. A great experience for Lindsay and time to reminisce for me and maybe work out a few kinks about a lovely, lovely place. Anyway, that has been our collaboration video. Remember to watch all the others and join us again. But please consider subscribing, liking and commenting below to see what else this channel, Desmond's Donders, has to offer. Thank you for watching Desmond's Donders. And remember, please take nothing but memories and leave nothing but tracks. Please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and hopefully we'll see you next time.